Hello students, welcome in today's lecture and in this video we are going to discuss the importance of our subject for two exam that is the NEET exam and the CET exam as well as we are going to discuss the syllabus of biology 1 that is the botany section for our class. The NEET exam that is the full form of this NEET exam is National Eligibility Entrance Cum Test. This exam is conducted by the CBSC that is Central Board of Secondary Education for various courses in medical. The different courses of this medical side are the MBBS, BDS, BMS, BHMS, BUMS and for all these courses this exam is conducted. This exam carries total 720 marks and it, this exam has the three subjects physics, chemistry and the biology. This physics and chemistry has the 45 question each one question carries the four marks so total marks of the subjects are 180 while the biology has the 90 questions out of this two sections are there botany and zoology botany has 45 questions zoology has 45 questions this total 90 questions are there and overall the total mass of this subject is 360 mass so biology is very important if we see the weightage of mass for this exam and that's why we are going to study this subject in detail according to NCRT for this exam. Now the second exam is of the CET exam that means common entrance test exam. This exam has the mass 20 and it is also conducted for various courses like D farm, B farm, agriculture, biotechnology and there are number of courses are conducted according to this CET exam. This exam also has the physics, chemistry and the biology. Physics has the 50 mass, chemistry has the 50 mass while biology has the 100 mass. So here also biology subject is very important for the CET point of view. Thus these are the two important exams which require biology as the main subject and now we are going to discuss the syllabus of our subject for a botany section or for biology one part. See here there are overall we have to study four units unit first, unit second, unit third and unit fourth. These four units include total eight chapters and here we are just take the revision of the each chapter that means which point we are going to discuss here that I am uh, telling to you and you have to see how much the depth of this chapter is there. See here the first chapter is the living word. This chapter always carry nearly two questions for the NEET exam. This living word chapter includes first the property of the living organisms that is the growth, reproduction, metabolism such properties are there which identify the living organism from the non-living organism. It also includes the binomial nomenclature that means each living organism may be plant or animal can be identified by giving the scientific name to it and that scientific name includes the two names one name is called a genus name, another name is called a species name. For example, the name of the mango is Mangifera indica. So Mangifera is the genus name and indica is the species name. So Mangifera indica is the binomial nomenclature and that in detail we are going to discuss here which is given by the scientist Linnaeus. And at, at last in this chapter we are going to discuss the number of important things that is the zoological park, botanical garden, herbarium, etc. So this living world is a very interesting part 
uh, of the um, bio one and this is the first chapter that we are going to discuss first uh, two questions are there ask for the neat exam and second chapter is the biological classification from this topic nearly in every year three to four questions are asked for the neat exam biological classification means what the living organism which are present around us are particularly classified into five kingdom by scientist Whitaker and those five kingdoms are kingdom monera kingdom protista kingdom fungi kingdom planti and kingdom animalia so we have to study in detail these five kingdoms in this chapter and later on in the same chapter we are going to discuss the lichens viruses virions Reons, etc. So, this biological classification is very important one because we have to study in detail the five kingdom as well as some organisms which are not included as a living organism, for example, viruses that we are going to study in detail. So, this is also one of the interesting part of our syllabus, and that uh, part biological classification carries four to three to four question for our exam. Third topic is called as a plant kingdom. Just I told you that there are five kingdom and out of this five, one kingdom is called as the plant kingdom. This plant kingdom, as in previous lecture we told that it is a multicellular, eukaryotic, fixed organisms which can be called as an autotropic organism. This plant kingdom again are divided into the five groups and those groups are algae, bryophyta, pteridophyta, gymnosperm and angiosperm that means in this topic we are going to study in detail the five groups of this plant and again from this five groups of plant we are going to discuss the importance of each part that is the importance of algae bryophyta pterodophyta gymnosperm and angiosperm to the human being as well as to their environment so this part is also important and again there are three to four questions asked for this neat exam. Then the second unit of the bio 1 includes two topics morphology of flowering plant and the second topic is there that is anatomy of the flowering plant. Morphology means the external appearance and anatomy means the internal structure that means in the morphology of flowering plant we have to study in detail the morphology or the external appearance of the flowering plant so what is meant by external appearance that means any plant if we observe by the naked eyes how it appears its height its flower color its seed uh, size or its leaves appearance that point that we can note it by seeing that plant and that is the call as the morphology so in this topic we are going to study in detail first the vegetative part of that plant and vegetative parts are the root stem and leaves so in detail we are going to discuss how this root structure is present in all the flowering plant how stem appear in all the flowering plant or how, what is the structure of the leaves in all the flowering plant so root stem and leaves and their modification we are going to discuss in this morphology of flowering plant as well as we are going to discuss the structure of the flower the structure of the fruit and the structure of the seed in detail in this point so this topic also carries the important family study that is a family Fabaceae, Liliaceae, Solanaceae. So at last uh, we have to study the three to four important families of this topic and this topic carries weightage about three to four questions for the NEET exam. Then the anatomy of the flowering plant. Anatomy means just we have seen the internal structure. So we have to study internal structure of the root part, stem part, leaf part, flower part, seed part, fruit part. But in this topic, anatomy of flowering plant, we are going to study first the different types of tissues which are present in the plant. And as we know, there are two types of tissue, meristematic tissue and the permanent tissue. 
permanent tissue are again classified into simple permanent and the complex permanent. Simple permanent tissue are again of three types: parenchyma, collenchyma, and the sclerenchyma. While complex permanent tissue are of xylem and the phloem. So all tissues are studied in detail in this point. And later on, in the same chapter, we are going to discuss the sections that is called as a transverse section of root, stem and leaves. Again, this root, stem of, and uh, leaves, we are going to classify into two types, dicot plant and the monopod plant. And at the same, or in the same chapter, at last, we are going to discuss the secondary growth in the plant. That means how the dicot plants are different from the monocot plants or how there is a wood formation takes place in this plant that is called as the secondary growth. So this anatomy of flowering plant also carry nearly about four questions for the NEET exam. Then the next unit is the third unit and third unit includes only one topic and that is called as the cell the unit of life. So in previous lecture we have seen some basic point regarding the cell part and we have seen that this cell is called as the basic unit of life because the body of every living organism is made up of the cells. But in this topic what we are going to discuss this cell topic is mainly related to the types of cell and two type of cells are there according to their structure. One is called as the prokaryotic cell and another one is called as the eukaryotic cell. So in this chapter, we are going to study in detail the structure of prokaryotic cell and the structure of the eukaryotic cell. According to their diagram, we can differentiate these two cells from the, each other. Then, in the same point, we are going to discuss the different types of the cell organelle. As you know, in the eukaryotic cell, there are number of cell organelles are there like mitochondria, chloroplast, then Koji complex, endoplasmic reticulum, lysosome, ribosome, vacuoles, microsome, etc. All these cell organelle we are going to study in detail and the function of each cell organelle in that cell we have to study in detail in this point. Also at the end of the chapter we are going to study in detail the differentiation between the plants and animal as well as the distribution point of the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell. So this cell topic is very also important very interesting one and this topic also has the weightage of nearly four questions are always asked from the chapter for the NEET exam. Then the last unit that is called as the unit fourth. This unit 4 has the two important topics, photosynthesis and the respiration. Photosynthesis in higher plant. We know the mechanism of photosynthesis that is by the using of the sunlight, plant can prepare their own food and that process we call as a photosynthesis. That's why we also call plant as a atrotropic organism. In this chapter, first uh, we are going to study in detail the structure of the cell organelle in which this photosynthesis process is carried out and that is the chloroplast. So chloroplast is very important for the process of photosynthesis because in this chloroplast there are present the photosynthetic pigments and which are responsible for trapping the sunlight and conversion of that light energy into the chemical energy. So that structure we are going to study in detail in this photosynthesis. And then in the same chapter we are going to study the structure of the different pigments. How these pigments are present in different plants in different way and then we are going to discuss how the cyclic and non-cyclic form are there for the preparation of the food in this plant. At the same time, we are also going to discuss some plants are called as C3 plant, some plants are called as C4 plant, some pathway are called as C3 pathway, some pathway are called as C4 pathway. All these points are in detail we are going to discuss in this photosynthesis. And at last, in the same chapter, we are going to discuss how the ATP, that is the energy currency, in the full form of ATP is adenosine triphosphate are formed in this photosynthesis mechanism and the last 
topic is the respiration in plants respiration is the another same mechanism where also the atp are formed like the process of photosynthesis respiration process is a very important in plant because it also require one more important cell organelle and that cell organelle is called as the mitochondria so in this chapter also we have to study in detail first the ultra structure of the mitochondria as we know the mitochondria is called as the power house of the cell because in this mitochondria there will be formation of the atp and that atp gets stored in this mitochondria so we have to study first the structure of the mitochondria in this point and then we are going to discuss the two types of respiration one is called as the aerobic respiration and another one is called as the anaerobic respiration the respiration which is carried out in by the using of o2 is called as aerobic respiration and the respiration which takes place without using of the o2 that is called as the anaerobic respiration so both type of respiration we are going to study in detail in this respiration in the plants and then we are going to focus only on the aerobic type of respiration because in the aerobic type of respiration three main processes take place one is called as glycolysis another one is called as krebs cycle and third one is called as the eps that is the electron transport system so all these are the points that we have to going to discuss in this year that is the syllabus of this bio 1 all the chapters are very interesting one we are teaching all the sub uh, topics from the ncert so we have to focus only on the ncert for neat point of view this syllabus of ncert are also useful for the cet exam and for particular our subject line to line reading of ncert is very important because the questions for this neat exam are us from this line of the ncert so line to line reading is very important one thing is important also that is the ncert language is very difficult so you should read twice thrice of the this books or this chapters and then and then only you can get the meaning of it so you should have the dictionary every meaning you should note it and then you have to read it so this is very important things of the today's lecture from the next lecture we are going to study in detail the unit first rank and from unit first the first chapter that is called as the living world okay thank you